Let's be honest for a second. The Frontier is not a great starting ship in Starfield. If anything, I found that a lot of people disliked the space combat early on in the game, just to realize later on that the problem for them wasn't the combat itself, but the Frontier being pretty eh. You can make some minor improvements to the Frontier by upgrading shields, weapon systems, and engines, but if you're looking to spend a lot of time in space, you might be looking for a new ship altogether. But go figure, buying a new ship gets expensive, and saving up the credits for a better ship might be a bit tricky early on in the game. So today, we're taking a look at three different quests that give you new ships as a guaranteed quest reward. One from a side quest, one as a faction reward, and another that you'll even be able to help design yourself. All for free. Now, there is another easy way to get a free ship, which I did discuss in a previous video. If you have the Kid Stuff trait, which lets you see your parents and send them money every week, you'll get a free ship from them called the Wanderwell. Early on, it serves as a really good ship, with better cargo capacity and handling than the Frontier. With 20 reactor power, a crew capacity of 2, and a cargo capacity of 800, it's a great improvement over the Frontier. It can be outclassed by two of the ships that we'll be talking about in this video, but I personally found it to be better than the first quest reward ship that we're looking at today. And that first ship is the Razorleaf one of the rewards from the Mantis side quest. To start this, you'll need to find the Secret Outpost Slate that can be found on Spacer enemies. One spot where you can find them early on is aboard the Nova Galactic Star Station in the Soul System, as part of the main quest, The Old Neighborhood. The slate will point you to a lucrative outpost in the Denebola system. While this quest can be started as soon as you find the slate, some enemies will spawn in at level 8, others at 25, and a couple at level 30. You can do this quest at closer to level 8 or 10, but you'll want to stick to cover when you're up against some of the harder enemies. And just make sure to bring a lot of ammo and med packs. As you make your way through the base, you'll learn all about the Mantis. An almost mythical role of a spacefaring vigilante, a mantle that has been passed on for over a hundred years. The former Mantis intended for her son to take up the role, only for him to be killed while trying to make his way through the trials of her secret base. At one point, you'll reach a puzzle room with a set of lettered tiles standing before you. The passcode for this puzzle is Tyrannus. At the end of the base, you'll receive a final message from the former Mantis, intended for her son. From here, you can safely use the base as your own, giving you access to crafting stations, a unique set of legendary armor, and the Razorleaf, the Mantis's signature ship. The Razorleaf is a Class A starship, with a reactor power of 18, two crew slots, shielded cargo space for smuggling, with 160 of your total 420 cargo space being shielded, along with laser, missile, and particle beam weapons already installed. While it doesn't have the most cargo space, it is a fast and nimble ship, and is one of the fastest ways to acquire particle beam weaponry early on. However, it does have less cargo capacity than the Frontier and the Wanderwell. One fun thing about the Razorleaf is that in space combat, some enemies will flee, saying that they're afraid of going up against the legendary Mantis. The second ship that we're looking at today comes as the final reward in the Freestar Rangers questline, one of the four main factions in the game. In order to join the Rangers, you will need to make some progress in the main story. Once you finish the quest, The Old Neighborhood, you'll have three options on how to proceed next. To join the Rangers as quickly as possible, you'll want to start the Empty Nest with Sam Co, taking you to Aquila City. Upon arriving in Aquila, you'll be tasked with helping resolve a dispute at the local bank, and given the opportunity to join the Rangers immediately after. None of the faction quest lines are particularly long, and if you focus on just the faction's main quest, you can knock out the Rangers in 4 to 6 hours. For finishing their faction story, you'll be named as a full-fledged Freestar Ranger and given your own ship. This grants you the Star Eagle, a ship with 29 reactor power, 5 crew slots, EM, laser, and missile systems already installed, not to mention 2,500 cargo capacity. Once I got this, it became my main ship, and I didn't use anything else for a very long time. It has good mobility, it holds up well in combat, and even with my hoarding tendencies, I haven't maxed out the cargo space yet. I did, however, make some minor changes, including reducing the wingspan, swapping missiles out for ballistic cannons, and changing the poop brown color that the ship starts off with. And last but not least, we're taking a look at the Kepler, which you get from completing the overdesigned side quest. 
This ship, unlike the others, does require a bit more of time and level investment in order to unlock it, and even to pilot it. But it's a great chance at getting what would otherwise be a very expensive ship to buy or to build. To access this, you'll need to make a little bit more progress in the main story. I was able to get the quest from Walter Stroud after completing the main quest, All That Money Can Buy, on Neon. Walter will tell you that his team at Strad Eklund has been working on a brand new ship model, but that they're struggling to make the final decisions necessary for it, and asks for your help in getting the project back on track. You'll get a free ship from this quest regardless of your choices, but if you want the biggest and best ship, you'll have to pass at least one persuasion check along the way. So either stock up on Hippolata or on Wine, both of which increase your persuasion chance for a brief period of time. When you first reach the company's star yard, you'll meet with the research and development team, with your first assignment being to help them determine the budget of the new ship model. This is where the first persuasion check comes into effect, either in favor of the biggest budget possible or a more reasonable one. After this, you'll be asked to take on a couple missions to get data on how the proposed model will behave. You can opt to do only one mission, but it's best to have two, one combat mission and one passenger mission. Finally, the R&D team will say that they have to come to a compromise on some of the proposed features of the ship, with the best solution being to tell each team member to make one cut from their ideal ship design. And with what ultimately sounds like a nightmare of a ship, you'll return to Walter, who's actually kinda happy with the results, weirdly enough. As a thank you for your help, he gives you one of the first ships off the manufacturing line and you can claim it at the New Atlantis landing pad immediately. If you opt for the higher budget ship, it'll be a massive Class C starship with more cargo space than you know what to do with. If you go for the smaller, more reasonable budget in the initial stage of the quest, you'll instead be given a Class B ship. Either way, it's a free ship, but you will need a higher rank in piloting in order to actually fly it. For Class B, you need pilot rank 3, and for Class C, you need a pilot rank of 4. So this is the one ship in today's list that it might take the longest to use, while still serving as a guaranteed free ship. All the other ships mentioned in today's video, the Wanderwell, the Razorleaf, and the Star Eagle are all Class A ships, meaning that you can fly them from the get-go. But in my opinion, going after these quest rewards as soon as you can is a worthwhile endeavor. I have nearly 80 hours on my main character right now, and I've yet to buy a full ship because of these rewards. I've made modifications to weapon and shield systems, but that's ultimately much cheaper than having to buy a new ship outright, and then still having to make any necessary modifications after. Even with the option to board enemy ships and claim them as your own, these guaranteed rewards proved to be better than the ships that I had found in random encounters and in combat. And one of the added benefits from the ships shown off today is that all of them have components that you would need ranks in the starship design skill unlocked in order to buy them for yourself giving you a nice way to try them out a little bit faster. I do want to fool around with rebuilding some of these ships to make them feel a little bit more my own, but I'm also still waiting to unlock some of the different skill ranks, as well as ship parts that only become available at a higher player level. Right now, I'm also working on a fairly in-depth video on shipbuilding and customization, as I really don't feel that it's super intuitive and straightforward. That video might still be a little while out but I want to make sure it's as helpful as possible. As always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more Starfield content here on the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.